How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, MATLAB. I'll be talking about a few terms here. So I have like CLC command, um, the clear command, what an element is, what lint space is, and the colon operator and the plot function. So when you open up MATLAB, hopefully you're either sitting like at a computer with MATLAB open because that would be ideal so you can like actually see it so you can like maybe play with it uh, but when you open up MATLAB this is MATLAB 2015 so if you're opening up 2016 I think the only difference is maybe just like font um, but when you first open up MATLAB you should see a current folder window a command window and a workspace window so like I talked about in class on Thursday, the current folder window just simply tells you which window or which um, folder you're in currently. Right now, I'm in apparently Windows 64 window, uh, Windows 64 uh, folder. Um, and you can basically pull files like files that you've uh, written code in from here. It's just kind of like an ease of access thing. But I'm not going to really use it a lot, so I'll just go ahead and close it. Um, your command window is where everything is pretty much going to be displayed. Um, all of our functions and um, all of our setting variables equal to um, something in our workspace is going to display like what those variables are actually equal. So on Thursday, I went and did something like x is equal to 5. Now here in my workspace window, it sure enough tells me what x is now equal to no matter what. So if I um, if I move along and I say y, y is equal to 6, um, z is equal to 10, um, t is equal to 87, whoa, equal to 87, then it's going to store all of those um, variables in this workspace window and it's going to tell me it's going to kind of I guess remind me so in the event that I had something that's a little bit more complicated um, this would be very useful <clears throat> okay so this is what you are going to be using for your quiz <coughs> so um, the CLC command simply what it does is it clears the command window so since I have all of this so far, I can go ahead and clear that by just typing in CLC and hitting enter, and all of it's gone. Yet, all of my variables are still what I set them equal to. So if I ask MATLAB, hey, what is T? So I simply just type in T, I hit enter, and sure enough, it tells me what T is equal to. And it'll do the same thing for X and for Y, <coughs> and for Z as well anything that I've said. The clear command. Now the clear command clears all values that are set to all variables. So what that means is I've set t equal to 87, x equal to 5, and so forth. If I go ahead and type out clear and I hit enter, so nothing happened really here, yet my workspace window shows that there are no variables set to any values. So if I ask MATLAB what, <laughs> for example, t is, it's now going to tell me that it's undefined. But that is because I cleared all of the values um, set to all variables. It'll do the same thing for x and for y and z. <clears throat> it just, it won't know anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out the window. Um, now, this is where we're getting into what we didn't talk about on Thursday. So, an element is a single value in a matrix. So, before I get into that, <coughs> everything in MATLAB is a matrix. If you don't know what a matrix is, it's kind of like what you saw in Excel. So, a matrix can be something like this, where we have um, a set of numbers here, and they're organized by row and by column. So here we have four um, different columns. We have four different rows. 
and we have four just different number or 16 I'm sorry just different numbers here <coughs> um, this magic function is just um, a built-in um, function in MATLAB that lets you create I guess any random um, number of values here in a six by six matrix and a four by four matrix whatever you put in here whatever you decide to put in here <coughs> now we can also have matrices that are um, like a one by two or a one by three or a three by one um, and so forth so <clears throat> in this case if you didn't know what vectors are we can have uh, in my lab we're gonna pretty much use um, the vectors and we'll learn how to create them um, <laughs> using certain features and functions of MATLAB. So um, any element though is simply a single value in a matrix. So in this magic function, this matrix here has, we would say, 16 elements in it. There are four rows, I'm sorry, yeah, four rows going um, horizontally, yeah, horizontally, and four columns going vertically. So we would say, <coughs> because it's a four by four matrix, we can even ask for the size of this. I say A and S because this is the default um, answer value that MATLAB sets. And it is, in fact, a 4x4. Four four. <coughs> um, but it does have 16 different elements within this matrix. Okay, now, <coughs> let's say I want to create a vector. I want to set this vector equal to x. And I want it to go from... 1 to one to 10. So there are a few ways that I could do this. One of them is just simply typing out 1, space 2, space 3, 4, all the way to 10. Um, and then surrounded by brackets. And sure enough, that gives me a, um, a vector going from 1 to 10. The, it dropped down columns here, so it says columns A through 10 are here because it didn't have enough space. I can change that if I wanted to. Yeah, it just, it adjusts. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger though. But there's an easier way to do this. So... <coughs> Lin space creates a linear vector starting from A, so A here, um, ending at B, which is that middle number, with C number of elements in it. So the way I would use this is I would say X is equal to Lin space. Um, my first number is where I want to begin. So I want to begin at 1. I want to end at 10. And I want how many um, elements in it. I want, in this case, obviously 10 elements, right? So I can go ahead and close it up with the parentheses. Hit enter. And that's exactly what I get. So I get a vector that goes from 1 to 10 um, simply by typing in lint space and putting the parameters here um, as I did. So the big thing about lint space is that it allows me to go from one uh, value to the next with a specific number of elements in between, or yeah, elements, um, yeah, I guess in between starting here and ending at, um, starting at one, ending at 10. <coughs> now, as far as, far as linear vectors, go there's another way that we can do them um, and it is using the colon operator so c8 
and get that right. Creates. So the colon operator creates a vector starting from A ending at C, and this increases by B elements, or B increments, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and clear this. <laughs> so now I'll set this equal to Y. So if I wanted to go from, let's see, 0 to, let's say I want to go to 100, <laughs> but I do I want to do that in increments of, um, let's try 10 and see what happens. So from 0 to 100, real quick, in increments of 10. Okay, so it gives me pretty much what I want is so it goes it starts at zero increases by 10 every single time and it goes all the way up to 100 and that gives me a total of 11 elements so it's basically a row vector it's like it's simply just like a single row vector with um, it happens to be 11 different columns so it is kind of like Excel, wherein you could have like just 11 different columns here and then just have numbers within those um, different columns in a single row. <coughs> but now let's go ahead. We can use MATLAB to... Um, MATLAB has functions within the program itself that we can use. So let's say I wanted to find... Um, Going back to my x vector, just simply to one, 1 through 10, let's say I wanted to find, I had an equation that said y is equal to x uh, plus 5. So I wanted to add 5 to every single one of these elements. <laughs> so if I typed it out here just to so I hit enter, y is now equal to whatever x is, uh, whatever element x is plus 5. So here I started at 1. And I ended at 6, 2, 7, 3, 8. So it's pretty much just adding 5, um, just like I asked it to here. Now, I can get a little bit more complicated by um, squaring these, uh, subtracting 6. <coughs> um, and then dividing it by itself and I get it does exactly that so <coughs> I can have a an equation um, using whatever vector I have um, and performing that equation on every single element of X just to make it a little bit more clear So this y is just simply squaring, um, squaring each element in x. So 1 squared is just simply just 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and it would do the same thing for each and every single element we had afterward, if we had more elements. <coughs> I can even take the sine of x, and it takes the sine of whatever number we had here, and it gives me this... It gives me my answer. I don't know if this is... It must be right, I guess, but I'm not sure. <coughs> okay, now we can use the plot function um, that will create a plot with x vector values on the x-axis and y vector values on the y-axis. <coughs> I don't have to use plot x and y. I can use plot um, any other variable. It doesn't matter. So let's say... Let's say I had that x was equal to, let's have a really large vector, because this is what MATLAB is really good for. <coughs> 0 to 1,000. And let's go... See what this does. Okay, so I have 
500, uh, 500 columns. This is all one single row, keep in mind. And I want to take the sign of all these values. So I get some, some other, I did that kind of fast, sorry. So I get some other kind of vector here. This is what I did. Now I can go ahead and plot this, plot X versus Y. And whoa, it's kind of crazy. It's moving like up and down kind of thing. Just to get that, just to get it like a little bit more clear. Let's go ahead and do something small. <laughs> let's do Let's go from negative 10 increments of 0.5 to 10. That that should be good enough. Um, let's take the sign of it. We get something. I have no idea if it's right. Hopefully it is. Assuming so. And now we can see it a little bit more clear. So this is okay. But <coughs> notice how this is like a little bit jagged here. Like these are really sharp points. Mainly because the data that I have it's not enough to be able to give me like a smooth curve because we know if you remember from trig the sine curve is really um, smooth because we have like obviously like an infinite number of values that we plot along this so if I made um, x a little bit bigger let's say point, point oh 0.05 so negative 10 to point oh 0.05 to 10 so now I have 400 columns. I need to redefine my Y because I have a new X. Okay, sorry. And that's not what I wanted. Plot X and Y. And now it's definitely definitely more smooth here rather than having like those jagged points. <coughs> so um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, sorry it came out to be roughly like 17 minutes long, but um, you will be well prepared if you watch this entire video for the stuff that we will do on... Thursday. So um, thank you for watching. Keep in mind that this stuff is going to be in the quiz. Um, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Yeah, thanks for watching.